Good afternoon, Matrix. So today we're going to be looking at the Labor Relations Act. And I thought it would be quite important to share with you that when you start working one day, there has to be a relationship between the employer and the employee. And this Labor Relations Act is there to give you guidance as to what your rights are as an employer, but also what your rights are as an employee. So this is one of those acts that really is important for you to understand because it's going to affect you when you start entering the working or the corporate world or one day when you own your own business. It's a really important act to understand and to know that it really does impact your life. So it's important that we understand the purpose of the Labor Relations Act. Now remember, it provides this framework for labor relations between employers and employees. It also promotes something called collective bargaining, and that happens at the workplace. So it's about hearing everyone's voices. It's not just one person speaking out for a certain right or condition to be fulfilled. It establishes labor courts and the labor appeals court so that you know what the process is if you are being treated unfairly. It promotes simple procedures for the registration of trade unions and employer organizations. So these are words that you need to constantly look out for. Anything to do with trade unions, to do with relationships between employers and employees, collective bargaining, strikes, lockouts, all of that is part of the Labor Relations Act. It provides for the right to lock out by the employer as a reaction to long strikes that take place. It promotes workplace forums to accommodate employees in decision making. So in other words, hearing what employees have to say and getting them to be part of the decision making. It promotes fair labor practice between the employers and the employees, meaning that the employer can't just simply dismiss you because they don't like you. It clarifies the transfer of employment contracts between the existing and possibly new employers. So the Labor Relations Act has a number of purposes and you just need to know about two or three of these so that you really come to grips with it. Remember, when we talk about the acts, they always want to know the effectiveness or the impact that an act has on a business. So in terms of the positive impact, it protects the rights of the businesses in labor-related issues, right? Because it provides a structure. Labor disputes, so that means when there is a disagreement, are settled quicker and are less expensive because we have the Labor Relations Act. It prevents unfair discrimination in the workplace as it promotes equal opportunities for all employees. It, it protects employers who embark on lawful lockouts when negotiations between parties fail. The disadvantages are that it increases the costs of labor because the more you're dealing with negotiations and collective bargaining, the demand is always higher for better salaries. Productivity may decrease if employees are allowed to participate in the activities of trade unions during work time. The costs of labor increase because of the legal strikes. Dispute resolution, in other words, solving these disputes through consensus may be time consuming. Employees may have to disclose information about workplace issues to the unions. Employees may not dismiss employees at will as procedures have to be followed. Some businesses may feel that the Labor Relations Act gives employees too much power as it creates a lot of lengthy procedures. Employers may not get a court interdict to stop a strike. These are just some of the negative impacts that the LRA has on businesses. Moving on to the penalties for non-compliance. The employers are forced to enter dispute resolution processes. So even if you feel as an employer that you didn't do anything wrong, if the employee takes you to the CCMA, the, Council for Co the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration, you are forced then to enter into this dispute resolution. Businesses can be fined if they don't comply with the Labor Relations Act. And if you don't comply, there's often heavy financial costs attached to it. Let's move on now to the next point, which is what is seen as discriminatory actions according to the Labor Relations Act. So if you promote the interests of one trade union over another trade union as a business, that is seen as discriminatory. 
if you dismiss employees, right, because they have taken part in legal strikes, that is discriminatory. If you dismiss someone unfairly, that is also seen as discriminatory. Refusing to establish workplace forums is another example of discriminatory actions. And like I said earlier, not allowing employees to take part in legal strikes is a discriminatory action. So now, how does one comply with this act? We need to allow employees to form their own trade unions or to belong to a trade union. That is called the freedom of association. You cannot say to an employee, you are not allowed to belong to a trade union. You need to support the establishment. That means the putting together of a workplace forum. And thirdly, you need to avoid any unfair dismissals or any unfair labour practice, even promoting um, certain people above others without following the correct procedure would be seen as an unfair labour practice. You have to, in order to comply, disclose all relevant information required by trade union representatives so that they can do their jobs effectively. And you should not breach or ignore any collective agreement that has come about. Let's now look at the rights of the employees. Right, so an employee has the right to join any trade union. As I said earlier, that is, this is known as a freedom of association. Okay? You can request that you want to be a trade union rep representative. Trade union representatives may take time off work to do trade union work, not just time off to do nothing. It is to take part in the trade union discussions. The right of the employee is that they are allowed to go on a legal strike. They have the right to refer a dispute to the CCMA, and if the CCMA can't resolve it, they then have the right to refer it to the Labour Court of Appeal. So what are the rights of the employers? Employers have the right to lock out employees who engage in unprotected or illegal strike or labour actions. They have the right to form and be a member of what we call an employer organisation. They can form a bargaining council, which can be used for collective bargaining pur purposes. They can dismiss employees who are engaged in an unprotected strike or if the employee has, has been misconduct, such as intimidation or violence during a strike action. They have the right not to pay an employee who has taken part in a protected strike for services or work that they did not do during the strike. So what's important with the LRA is it still goes through, we must know the purposes, we must know the effectiveness, we must know the discriminatory actions and the penalties and how to comply. But these last two slides are added on for the LRA, so that it is the right of the employer and the rights of the employee. I hope that it has helped.